Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I'm also fine. So today I'm going to show you how you can uh, create a CI/CD pipeline for your React.js applications. So React.js is a front-end framework developed by Facebook and a lot of people use this to develop their front-end framework using React.js. And uh, you need to create a CI/CD pipeline in AWS so, uh, so that when you push your changes, it's automatically deployed to the front-end. In this example, we are going to use S3 uh, bucket for uh, storing the compiled uh, HTML CSS files. And we use CloudFront for the uh, domain and uh, subdomain pointing. And we're using AWS Certificate Manager for uh, creating the SSL certificate. So let's get started. Here's our uh, application. So this is uh, developed in React. We have uh, source files, we have env.env env files, we have I have created .env development. Now I'm going to create a different branch. So uh, there is master branch and I'm going to uh, push everything from dev to merge master. So um, this is our master branch. And I'm going to create a uh, CI/CD pipeline for our master branch. So in AWS, if you wanted to create a CI/CD pipeline, you need to use AWS code commit, AWS uh, code uh, build, and AWS code pipeline. So we are going to use that. Um, in to use code build, we are going to use a build spec.yaml file. We already have one created for the dev. I'm going to create another one as a copy. So let's make a copy. Paste it here. Build spec copy, and I'm going to use it as build spec dot dot. Spec and dot dot here. Okay. And I'm going to use uh, production dot env dot production to dot env dot local. So what I have to do is I just need to create a dot env dot production file. And I'm going to copy everything in uh, yeah. Now this is the project API URL. I'm not going to change it because I'm uh, the backend is not defined here, but still application runs well. I'm going to just show you the process. Okay. So uh, what we are creating here is the version 0.1 env. This is not is necessary. It came from other projects. Then phases pre-builds. So before building our applications, we need to run this npm install and then copy the uh, .env files which has our environment related settings like the production url or maybe some other things to .env.production.local then we are going to build it npm run build and then after building that uh, react applications we are going to use or we are going to cache the node modules folder okay so uh, I'm going to uh, push my changes. Spec fraud. Then in the uh, AWS, I have to create an S3 bucket, which I have already created. This is my S3 bucket. At this moment, there is no file. And uh, I have used the property, the property. I've used it as a static web hosting. So that means this will be used as a web hosting. And uh, then I have created a AWS certificate manager. I have created a certificate for this subdomain. I have used CloudFront, which is pointing to that uh, S3 bucket. You see, this is the S3 bucket. And it is linked with the SSL certificate. And um, then if I've also pointed the domain to this uh, cloud front, and if you copy this domain, run it. at this moment, you will see nothing because um, there is no files here, as you can see. In the permissions sec 
section, I have created a permission public so that uh, this, web, this website can run without any permission issue. So now let's go to uh, code build. So I'm going to create a build for this production environment, create a build project. So uh, this is the project name, the pharmacy front end fraud. Front. Then I'm going to choose the source. Source is AWS code commit. The repository is e pharmacy front end fraud. E pharmacy front end, this is the repository name, and I'm going to use the branch master. That's for the fraud. Then in environment, I'm going to use managed images. So Amazon Linux 2, runtime, I'm going to use standard images. Then I am going to use the existing, uh, we have a lot of existing uh, roles that I have created previously. If you do not have any roles, you need to create that role and give permissions. Then I'm going to um, keep it all as default and then I'm going to compute. I, I'm going to use this one because sometimes when we try to build the memory limit process, so to not to take any risks, I'm going to use this seven GB memory for VCD. And then I'm going to use the build spec file, which I have created, which is build spec .yml. Then artifacts, no artifacts. This is all default. Yes, CloudWatch log, and I'm going to give it a name. Let's create a build project here. So our build project is done. Then I'm going to create the pipelines. Create pipeline, give the project name. Rod. use existing roles, use existing location, next. Source provider, AWS code commit, repository name, eFarmers frontend, branch name, master. Next, build provider, AWS code build, project name, uh, fraud, eFarmers fraud, that the project we have created, click next. Deploy provider here, I'm going to deploy to Amazon S3. The bucket name, I am going to use this bucket name, which I have created previously. So let's go here, this one, pharmacy. Extract file before deploy, I need to choose this additional configuration. I'm not going to use KMS, so this can get blank. Click next. If all are okay, then create pipeline. That means we have created the pipelines. This pipeline will take our code from the code commit repository, and then it will <coughs> make a build using npm build. And then the output of the build will be pushed to the S3 bucket. So the process is the S3 bucket holds this. After the deployment successful, you will see all the HTML files. Then we are going to use AWS CloudFront to point that subdomain to the S3 bucket. And we are going to use AWS Certificate Manager for uh, creating the SSL certificate. So when this is done, the tick mark is ticked. We will see that there is files here and we will uh, be able to uh, browse the website. So at this moment, you see that there is no, uh, there is no files here. It's so, so XML access tonight because there is no file. And we are going to create this build. After the build is done, we will see files. So this is a very useful <coughs> process that if you have a CICD pipeline created properly, then 
if you do any changes to your code, it will immediately come to your development environment. And if you have created the production environment as well, then it will put to the production as well. In this process, you don't need to manually run the build and then create, copy those build files and upload to your S3 bucket or somewhere else. This is a very automated process. It saves a lot of time. And also, if there is any error on your React applications that the build failed, this process will also fail because uh, it, it will not properly build your application if there is any error in your React code and then the process halts so, so that you have your safe from having a buggy application. So I, I usually prefer to AWS uh, CSD pipelines code build to use to deploy my front end applications. And it is very, very easy. As you can see, we have done it less than 10 minutes. And once you've done, you can use it for years. The build process takes time, as you know, then team run build is a very tedious process. But if you are patient, then you will see that uh, it's completed in two or three minutes. So let's wait two or three minutes. Hopefully it will be done within the time frame. I'm still waiting for the build process to be finished. Sometimes it takes three to four minutes. If you see any error in the build process, try to increase the uh, limit. Okay, so that was quick. And uh, let's refresh here. Should be able to see the files. Here it is. Then we are going to refresh this page and we should, able, we should be able to see the, yes, front end. As you can see, our deployment is done and this is our front-end application. So it is a dummy application, but that doesn't matter. The process is you create a code commit and then you create a build spec file. You create the build spec commands. You can easily copy this uh, build spec commands. I will push that or I will give it in a description so that you can use it. And then you create uh, an S3 bucket, you create a certificate manage, SSL certificate in S using as a certificate manager and point, you then need to point your S3 bucket to CloudFront using, uh, and then you point your subdomain to that CloudFront URL. So um, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. That will really help me to get more videos in coming days. And I wish you success in your career. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.